Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. You can join us on all the places on the YouTubes. <laughs> so in addition to our talk shows, we also post tutorial videos, virtual stitch-ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at QT Fabrics and Inmart. You can learn more about each of them on their links in the episode notes. So today we are joined by the ultra bright iris polyester thread from Inmart. And it was used in the quilt hanging behind us today. Um, and it quilts like a dream. So it's a oh. it is a commercial embroidery thread that I super duper love because it just it just glides on through the sewing machine. It's uh, yeah, I've been using it on the crazy quilt that I'm working on right now and the insane quilt and I'm really liking it. Yeah. I used one of the neons, <gasps> which was very exciting. I liked it. Yes. Well, I'm going to set that so, right there. Very good. Uh, and then also joining us today, new from QT, is the Radiance Fabric by Dan Morris. Uh, and this is one of their digitally printed fabric lines. And I think they had it hanging up at Fall Market, and it was really eye-catching when I you agree. walk by. Of course, it's my colors, so I'm all about this. Mm. 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 It's very cute, too. <laughs> and what a great, I mean, I, I like these Tuffets, and yeah. I like the... Well, the kit for this came from Tuffet Source, um, which is another friend of QT Fabrics. So thank you, Sharon, for providing that for us. But it's it's just lovely fabric, and I love that it's so rich and intense, and it kind of reads as a batik until you get up close, and you're like, oh, wait, no. It's not, it's yeah. Not. It's got more um, depth than a, yes. a traditional batik would have because it can have more colors in it, mm -hmm. which makes the digital print you know, why you would want something digital yeah. printed, which is really kind of cool. But I think Radiance is out in stores now. I've seen them promoting it out mm -hmm. on the Facebooks. The Facebooks, the, the YouTubes, Facebooks. the Instagrams, all the, places. all the places. So what are we talking about today? So today we're going to be talking about statement and protest quilts and deciding how to quilt a quilt and tips for keeping the design consistent, which is important. So we're joined today by Pam's Quilt Selfie. Yes. So there's going to be a separate video about the story right. behind this quilt. And there does need to be a video because it's a great story. Yeah. Well, the story is basically my brain's kind of a jerk. And so I have now memorialized that. <laughs> That's not... Okay. Sometimes my brain says stuff that I don't agree with. Right. I'm like, why are you being a jerk? Brain. Brain. Why you want me to stay in bed when I need to get up and go do stuff? Why are you making me cry in the middle of Washington, D.C., <laughs> walking around the National Mall just because I saw a cute dog? Thanks, break, jerk rain. <laughs> <laughs> she did text me with dog updates on what they saw. It was very it was very good. Well, so. it was exciting. I love a—A, a, I love a walking vacation. And I do think, like, in the sliding doors version of my life, there is an alternate Pam that does live in a city and gets to walk everywhere instead of being stuck in traffic trying to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and she's living her best life, <laughs> walking around, uh, seeing dogs all the time. Yeah, this is not... We've had this discussion. There is no City Lynn. No. I'm not a city girl. There's Lake Lynn. There's Lake Lynn. And Loft Pam. Yeah. <laughs> right. So there's But no you do city live Lynn. near the lake now. I know, so it's not going to change. <laughs> it's not... I just... Oh, I'm not a city girl at all. <laughs> Like, even going into, and I love Atlanta, and I love being close to Atlanta, that we can go and do stuff, but even going into a downtown city, I'm always like, oh my gosh, we're in a city. I don't know. I just don't love it. It's not my, not my jam, I guess, as you would say. So, it's your jam. It's my jam. So, all right. So, prepping quilts for our guild show. That's what we've been working on, in addition oh to gosh. walking around. So, we talked about this last night on our Stitch In, and honestly... Um, well, that's all I kind of did last week is I've I've been working with the quilt show, and I'm not in charge of the whole thing. Thank you, God. I am just in charge of the judging and jurying. It's a lot of work, and I'm and I'm and I appreciate the work that they're doing, and I can be supportive of it, but I just don't want to be in charge of it this time. So I've been there, done that, yep. and other people need to you know, take control. So, but I've been in charge of the judging and jurying, and so a big part of ours was this week, and we um, always have to jury out a number of 
you know, quilts, because we can't hang as many quilts that are entered because of limitation of the building. Not that we don't want to or that they're not worthy. They're always worthy. They're just, uh, there's not enough room to hang them. You can only cram so many quilts yeah. in a, you know, in the Civic Center, so... Well, in fact, this quilt, this quilt was well, prepped for the show, and I finished stitching the binding last night. Right. So <laughs> um, she may or may not have gotten in. I don't know. We, I won't know for a while yet, yeah. but that's okay. But I, um, I wanted to get it done anyway because I said we should hang this for the show so we could tie into our first topic, which is... Which is... Statement quilts. Statement quilts. What, is, what does that even mean, Lynn? Well, you know, I was, I was looking that up, and... Um, I th- my definition, or what I think it is, is it's it's you're making a quilt to memorialize, celebrate, or protest, protest whatever cause, right, mm-hmm. that you believe in. And we've been doing this for, you know, since the beginning of this country when we've been making quilts. So as a, you know, women have been doing this statement quilt for a long time, whether it's celebrating a particular thing or, you know, in protest or political action type of movement. In fact, um, in the late 1800s, the largest amount of statement quilts that were ever made was made for the temperance. Mm -hmm. And there's even blocks that we still make today. The temperance block, which is a, and we'll show a digital picture of this, um, which is the temperance T, and it's usually set in four in the block or the drunkard's path. Um, so the temperance quilt was the largest number of quilts that were made for one particular um, political agenda, and that was to, you know. Pro- support prohibition. Support prohibition, which is what they did. Um, so, and we can still find those today. Most of them, they're blue and white, but there are other colors too, mm-hmm. historically, kind of thing. So, we've been doing it for a long time. I did find um, Betsy Greer coined a term in 2003 called craftism. Craftivism. Craftivism, like crafting and activism together, craftivism, Mm -hmm. um, which is not easy to say, but she says it's the practice of engaged creativity, especially regarding political or social causes. So, and I think we're still doing that, you Mm -hmm. know. Uh, QuiltCon had a um, social justice... Sewing Academy. Right. Which is a separate group from the Modern Quilt Guild. Right. Uh, And she's been uh, the founder of that. And her name is escaping me. I don't know. Her her name is escaping me, but she's been interviewed on Just Want a Quilt, a podcast that we've been featured on with Dr. Elizabeth Townsend Gard. So we'll point to that episode as well in the show notes. Right. uh, To learn more about that and, and the work that she's doing. And, you know, the displays that were at QuiltCon were... Quilts that had been made by youth uh, in reflection on what they're seeing in their environment. And I think there was a missed opportunity particular to that exhibit at QuiltCon is that there were, there were no stories provided, no background, no and, artist statements or, or, or anything. And I think that really mm-hmm. – some of those quilts you can walk up and go, I don't like this imagery, right, or I don't understand this imagery. Mm-hmm. And if you had the story, it would mean so much more. Mm -hmm. It would have that explanation of what that was. So, yeah, I think that was a missed opportunity. There was also, and I think it's still going around. I just haven't seen it. But there's Sacred Threads. They do a um, a show every year in the D.C. area. And it has a more spiritual, religious kind of um, quilts Mm -hmm. from all types of um, that area. Um, Threads of Resistance. Threads of exhibit. Resistance is another exhibit that um, Susan Brubaker. No. Yes, <laughs> I got the first name. I was I was going through the Susans that I knew were quilters um, that she kind of ha- think helped put together um, that were political statements. More, mm-hmm. um, I can't say I've seen that. I've seen images of I that, have. but I haven't seen it live and in person. But it was at a quilt show that you went to, yes. right? Yes, uh, and now uh, it is escaping me which one that was. But um, 
But yes, it was a traveling exhibit. I think it started at kind of just a local artist exhibit, and then they got accepted to travel with some of the nationwide quilt circuit. Right. Um, But interesting. And and a mix of, you know, art quilt techniques and piecing. And so just it was a broad mix and a lot of contributors to it. Uh, And, yeah. Well, and, (laughs) you know, I— you know, no matter what size you are on in any of these, you know, whether you agree with prohibition or not, it's over now. Um, but or any of the other things, I do think those quilts need to exist, mm-hmm. whether they are my jam or my, you know, personal leanings, personal leanings or, you know, what I connect to. I still think those quilts need to be out there because, one, I think an artist should you know, create and make and express themselves. So I'm totally into that. But I like to see all the variety. So Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, if I'm seeing for something and it's a controversy, I want to see the against it or, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm all for everything being out there and then letting the culture take that in and and do with it. So well, I like statement quilts, and I know I drug you around for me, at QuiltCon, quilt saying, we have got to find this quilt because it means a lot to me. And that was the um, quilt that celebrated um, Down syndrome. So I remember dragging him down the line going, we've got to find this quilt. <laughs> and I think we went through every, it, we started at one end of the show and we went through every aisle and it was on the very last aisle. <laughs> so I made her look for all of them. I'm like, no, I, I know it's got these you know, so, and there was a extra chromosome. It had the 20, there's what, 27, 23 cor- chromosomes in our DNA. And and the Downs is Not on the scientist. 21st. Not Don't know. I don't remember exactly. The Downs is on the 21st. I think it's 23. We're one away from a banana. I know that much. <laughs> so that, you know, I... I, my sister said there's a Down syndrome quilt there. Have you seen it? I went, no, but I'm going to now. So I was making sure that, and I took a picture. And I can actually put a picture of that. We can connect to that one because that one was important to me. Um, So I was listening to um, Frances O'Rourke Dowell's podcast, and she had recorded... She had recorded a first part of, like, Reflections on Quilt Con, and then she'd apparently recorded a second part but hadn't released it until just th- this week that we're filming. And and she was reflecting upon the statement quilts that just present as quilts, but then when you read the description, you realize, like, oh, there's actual meaning behind this. So one of her friends had done a quilt um, – that was in recognition of the number of children that had been separated at the border from their parents okay. in a particular year. Right. And when you look at the quote, you're like, oh, it's just two thousand over 2,000 pieces of fabric sewn together. I'm like, oh, well, that's a lot of little pieces of fabric. Right. And then when you read the story, you're like, oh, no, wait, there's meaning behind this, right. this particular number that was used. Right. Um, and I, those are the kind of quilts, in terms of statement quilt, that I enjoy more just as – a person taking in art of of understanding that there's a deeper story. Now, this one will hit you over the head because, like, it's just big old words on it. Um, but there are more subtle ways to get the same statement across, and I love the variety of expression where oh, some I are, you know, very blatant. Like, here are words that definitely explain what this quilt is about versus a much more subtle artistic approach that isn't always immediately obvious. And I think, and I appreciate the variety of that. I like the the juxtaposition of, look, this is a beautiful quilt, and you read the story and you're like, oh, wait. And, and now I don't we- feel good about this quilt because of the meaning of children being separated and that's negative. Wait. So I kind of like that juxtaposition of this is great, and then you're like, but this means this? Oh, now it's more powerful. Right. You know, and I think that can be done with a, I think that's a great example. It can be done with a variety of you know, and I, but it's the other way too. Like we're still doing the drunkard's path block, and I'm pretty sure we're not all for, you know, the temperance movement at you know a hundred years later. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I like that though. I I like statement quilts. I don't always agree with statement. 
And I think that's okay. I think that's fine. Yeah. And we're I don't not about expect camping everybody. camping down on people's opinions. Right. No. And I think that's, everybody's going to run into something. They're going to go, I disagree with that. But, yeah. but it still made you think about it, which I think is good. And I think, honestly, not to oversimplify, that's the same way as our approach to quilting. Like, we have particular techniques we like, rulers we like. But also recognize that just because I do something one way doesn't mean you can't do it completely different. I mean, that's right. our entire relationship. I kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I know. You said I, on one of the videos we put out not too long ago, you said, I hate the sew and flip. And I'm like, I love the sew and flip. Like, I totally, I can do that. But it's not oh, your, yeah. yeah. People that were on my side, they're like, oh, I know. They all were like, oh, God, thank you, babe. I hate it, too. <laughs> And then people are like, you could fix it if you did this. And I'm like, yes, but I also hate specialty rulers. So I'm not going to fix one thing I hate with another thing I hate. So I like to sew and flip. And I use it quite often. I appreciate it. but So you know, it doesn't bother me. Anyway, I didn't even think that it was a thing until you brought that up. Then I went, wow, okay. Oh, yeah. Didn't know people hated this. Mm -hmm. But now I do. Now you do. Quilt. What are you going to do with that knowledge? The controversy Nothing. of sew and flip. <laughs> it's going to be like, hey, enjoy your life. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I, yes, on state, I'm I'm pro statement quilts. <laughs> so let, let me ask this then. Okay. It used to be that QuiltCon, when they used to have a dedicated category for statement quilts. I think and, so, yeah. And now they're just sort of blended into the technique-based categories. Do you think they should be... When in a show called out in a specific category, should they be blended in? Like, what what are your thoughts there? As a person who is in charge of jurying a show, <laughs> and do you want to round categories. them all up and stick them in a corner? In charge of categories. Mm -hmm. I, I know that our show locally is, um, they, would be, they would be a part of the whole show. Right. They would be in an art category or an applique category, and or I don't remember what category, category I entered this one in. I had to change it. Oh. Um, <laughs> FYI. Do we then imply that it was accepted? I'm not implying anything. I'm just saying <laughs> I changed it from one category. No, I didn't change it. You marked that it was whole cloth, and it's oh, not I did? whole cloth. I am not on my game for this show <laughs> I'm like, entry. I'm like, that's not whole cloth. I know it's not. Take that out. Uh, I didn't change the category. I changed that description. Okay. Because I'm like, it's not whole cloth. It was miscategorized yeah, by me because so. I was probably frantically <laughs> filling out like three quilt entries right near the deadline. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo, just get it done. Yeah, you did. <laughs> cool. I, I wonder what else I messed up. The name. Anyway. Well, whatever. <laughs> Let's name something completely different in the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... Um, so in our, in every quilt show, it's going to be different because you really need to, you really need, before you enter a quilt show, read all the categories. What quilt fits, what category does that <laughs> quilt fit into? Yeah. Because honestly, <laughs> ours is a local show and I was in charge so I could move. I obviously saw this, a few quilts. I'm like, this is all applique and they had it in piecing. Had I left it in in piecing, yep. it would have gotten juried out. If or I if moved it, hadn't, it, it would have been judged on the merits of, of piecing, piecing, and there was which no piecing. Zero. <laughs> right. So I moved it to a more appropriate category, the applique category, and it had it was fighting. It was in its right group, you know. But that's completely a technique based type of category. So I think that's where QuiltCon had been headed, which means that all of the statement quilts, and statement quilts can be any type of technique, like the one you were describing is a piecing technique, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, this could be like combination or more applique technique. Um, so if you put it in, a statement category and they're judged how do you judge the quality of one statement against another yeah okay and i think that's an that's a that's a legitimate and that's question. not a quilting judgment that is a no it would be argument that is a debate judgment <laughs> no 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 i don't i don't agree with that you would have to have a judge who understood that i'm judging this applique to what is the best Example of applique, this quilt, which is applique, what is the best example of applique out there? If it was it's in judged an to a no, 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 no. Oh. 
Like, it's how you judge art quilts. Art quilts can be entirely pieced, or they can be whatever. So you judge it to the standard of that technique that it is, not the category. The okay. st- it's like, okay, it's like a dog show, right? So, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hang with me. This will work. I'm telling you. Okay, so when you go to a dog <laughs> show, the first thing you're judged by breed so it's all the Salukis in the same ring, and you judge the best Saluki. Then you judge by group, which is a hound group, right? So Salukis are hounds. So you judge the Saluki to the— I said hound. At the, <laughs> no, you judge the Saluki to the ideal Saluki in that group. And how close are they to the ideal or standard of what a Saluki is. So the perfect Saluki that may not actually be in that show. Correct. Okay. Then you judge the dachshund to the standard of what the dachshund is. And is the dachshund closer to the standard or the Saluki closer to the standard? Right? And that's how they pick one, two, three. Then it goes to best of show. Well, none of those categories, you know, they're all different kinds of dogs at that point. It's the same thing with quilts. So you're judging it to the standard of what the best of that could be. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you were doing a statement quilt, you would be judging the techniques to the standard of the best technique that quilt has. With me? or Yes. Okay. Amazingly, that actually worked. I was skeptical. (laughs) I came around. Thank you. (laughs) I knew you'd come around. Um, so I think if you put if you put a category that said statement quilts, then the judge would have to judge to the standard of that technique that that quilt used. Okay. How close does it get to that tech standard compared to another quilt in a different technique? How close does it get to its standard? Gotcha. And you're not judging the message. One hopes not. No, I don't think you should. <laughs> Right. No, I don't think you should either. But yeah. I also know that you know people have feelings, I, and they judges do. are people. Thus, judges have Agreed. feelings. Agreed. Agreed. The commutative property of feelings Agreed. says. <laughs> Agreed. I know, <laughs> and I agree with that. But I don't think that's how it should judge. You should judge to the standard. Yes, the execution so, of the quilt. Now, the I don't necessarily know that that is how judging is set up, particular to QuiltCon, because of the structure of their judging. They have a quilt judge, an art judge, and then. And, know, and they may be the judging third. different things. That's so. true. Yeah. And each, right. although there was a standard for judging, that governing body is not quite in existence. Still anymore. in existence. Still in existence. Okay, good. Still in existence. In QA. Um, it's not in QA. It's they, they're something called else. something else. Okay. Um, but they will actually, they're actually holding their convention at our show in June. Ooh, la di da. Yeah, we're fancy. And one of the reasons they're attracted to our show is because we have such a great balance of piecing technique. I mean, traditional quilts, modern quilts, art quilts. Mm-hmm. You know, we really have a applique quilts. We really have a wide variety. Okay. And that's going to be true in this show, too, because I've kind of seen it. <laughs> All right. But I know nothing. I I can't tell anybody anything. So there you go. Okay. That's what I know. Now we're going to take a closer look at Selfie, and we'll be right back. Okay. This was a viewer request. Okay. How do you pick a quilt design, which is something we've talked about before in How Should I Quilt This, specific shows. And also, how do you keep that design consistent, I would assume, in terms of scale, (laughs) as you move across the quilt? Those are good questions. Step one, make a small quilt. (laughs) (laughs) Less pressure. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Okay, so we have talked a lot about custom quilting and semi-custom quilting and all-overs and all that kind of good stuff. Do you feel like you're more of a custom quilter or an all-over? I know the answer to this. I don't know why I'm asking. It depends on the purpose. Like, if I am working on a donation quilt or a snuggle quilt or a couch quilt or, like, a gift for a quilt muggle, a muggle from the Harry Potter lexicon of non-magical people, um, you know, they're not— 
they're not going to have feelings about whether you spent 300 hours quilting it or two hours quilting it. And so I feel like to preserve my time, I will go with an all over in that case. Now, when it comes to a quilt like this or anything that's going to be hanging in a show, it will definitely have. Or that I'm keeping. That's mine. Oh. Eh, I know, because I'm agree with you so far. I'm just saying, if I'm keeping it, I'm going to spend more time because I want it to look a certain way. Because my standard that I want in my quilts in my house are probably higher than, okay. Potentially, but also knowing that I don't want to be sleeping under a piece of cardboard. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm more likely <laughs> to custom quilts. True. Even a larger design. But I also like, know my tolerance for custom quilting on large quilts, <laughs> which is not terribly high. <laughs> So for this quilt, I wanted there to be custom elements. I don't know if the camera's picking up. There's a motif at the bottom that's supposed to look like a giant brain. Uh, but this quilt is made out of improv pieced log cabin blocks. And I made a choice that said, okay, the center of each of those blocks is going to be pebbled. That's an acceptable amount of pebbling. Because <laughs> by the time you're sick of pebbling, you're done filling in the little square. And then... There's like some gold fabric that's used in many of the blocks. And that particular piece of gold fabric gets a ribbon candy. Okay. And then all the other background pieces get the same kind of all-over pattern. So it's semi-custom. Okay. Specific to the piece of fabric. And you're determining that by the fabric Correct. tells you what to Not do. Not because like, oh, every in piece this... of the log cabin that's at the top second out needs to be this. No, it was... It was Whenever that sh yeah, showed because up, because it's like kind it. of a random. Like my brain was a big old jerk, and sometimes it forgot that I was supposed to be pebbling in the center, and I went in the all over, and then I had to go and like fill in pebbling in the middle of the all over. Don't tell the judges that if it gets in the show. <laughs> um, I won't, and um, I'll be so busy that won't. I, I mean, I do enjoy watching my friends' quilts get judged. As well as my quilts get judged, just because I like to see what the mm -hmm. hear what the judge has to say about it. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that this show though. Ooh, are we gonna do the thing that we did two years ago, where we read the judges' comments on any of our quilts that got in the Absolutely show? Absolutely, we think can that's, do that. Oh, that's gonna be good. Yeah, we'll I'll do put that. that in as a topic. So you'll see that drop sometime in July because our show is in early June. If we get quilts in the show, we'll do that. If we get quilts in the show, that would be the key right now. <laughs> As a person who entered a quilt in the show that won the Guild Challenge, I am confident that one got accepted, even though this one is not saying nothing. <laughs> but, so I think yeah. I'll have at least one in. I say nothing. <laughs> I did give a lecture to my jury people that um, you can't tell anybody anything, so I'm trying to, oh, yeah. you know. Well, and, and please let it be known that I'm not, like, pressuring her no, off camera. It, but she's, I'm like, on camera it's funny. <laughs> And she really isn't yeah, pressured. I'm like, eh, something got so. in, I'm sure. <laughs> and honestly, I think everybody finds out next week. So oh, good. See, there you it's go. It's not going to be long. But that'll so. be good because I think that's good for people to see, like, it's not all that scary. No, it's not. And typically judges don't point out things that you don't already know. Well, and and I think that was what was good the last time we did it was because we said, I knew that. Thanks. Can you believe they didn't pick up on this <laughs> glaring mistake, though? Yeah. <laughs> they totally missed that. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Okay, but back to quick picking back quilting. To, okay, so here are a couple of um, ideas of being consistent that I think may help, may uh -huh. or may not help. Um, you said something about being consistent in the size. Yeah. So sometimes I find, like, I'll start off pebbling and I'll think, ooh, good, I'm going to do, like, big honking pebbles because then um, I won't have to do as many. <laughs> right. But then somehow, like... Over time, it just kind of goes back to whatever my default pebbling size is, which is slightly bigger than a pencil eraser. <laughs> which is small. That is small. Yeah, that's not small. Like, I was it. aiming for a quarter. I ended up, like, oh, down to a nickel and then a dot U.S. currency. I don't, sorry, I don't know international currency sizes. Although, apparently, we picked up a, a Swedish krona while we were in Washington, D.C., and we have no idea how or why. Well, you're in Washington. We thought it's it was very a quarter. International town. And so we didn't think anything of it until my husband's going through the change of like, what's a krona? <laughs> wow. I think it's Swedish. <laughs> there you go. That's kind of cool, though. I like international money. I have a collection of coins from countries I've been to. I just keep them. 
for no, and I'm sure they're... They, now you can use them for pebbling reference sizes. Yes. Well, that was one going to be one of my suggestions is um, get a quarter or a dime or a penny or a nickel or, you know, a coin from your country. A, vis- a, a, bu- a particular button size a particular from your button, button box. size and just have it with you next to you. I know for a long arm, that's probably easier than for a sit-down machine. Um, but have it just next to you to go, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Mm-hmm. Um, if it helps, trace that a few times in the area that you're wanting it and to be close to, that helps. And not next to each other, like I wouldn't trace every oh, one. No. Yeah, but just But like I would just about. like scattered about so you can just see, oh, that's how big this is supposed to be. Um, and you can do that for other um, designs. Like if you're doing like big swirls like that, have a cardboard cut out with mm-hmm. that size circle or have a you know some visual reference for you your dinner plate <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe a little big maybe the salad plate that would be maybe okay it's probably still a little big but you know trace those in a couple of different places so that you know um, what the size consistency and mm-hmm. that will help in consistency I think that um I take I doodle all the time, like seriously doodle all the time. So I'm drawing pictures and I'm keeping sketches and notebooks. Um, The quilt that I'm currently working on, I've probably got, I don't know, 10 or 15 pages of notes. Just And that was way before I even took thread to fabric. Um, I have just been drawing on this one design for a long time to get it in my brain of this is what I wanted to do. Once I sat down and really got serious about this design, I also sketched out specifics of, okay, I've been drawing for three months. Now, which one of these drawings are going to make it to the quilt for a design? And and this is how specific I am. So, like, I have this, um, I have this border of butterflies. And so I drew out each butterfly and what I wanted in that butterfly and then did um, references to thread for, you know, that butterfly and what it was going to look like and how the feathering and the pebbles and stuff are going to go with that. And I did that for each of the butterflies. So draw it out. And then I have this. This has been next to me while I've been quilting the whole time. So I'm, I'm always referring back to it. Am I picking the right color? Am I doing that? Um, another thing that I've done is your digital camera is your friend. Your mm-hmm. phone is your friend. What And what I, ugh, I've done this before. So like I design the border as I'm going. I haven't taken notes. I just design the border on the top. And by the time you get to the bottom, you're like, what did I do? Like, I don't remember, but I took a picture of it at the top. So that allowed me to, by the time yeah. I got to the bottom, I went, oh, yeah, this is how Which I did that. Which you need a long arm because you've now rolled the quilt sandwich right. up and you can't get to the top to see it. When right. With the kind of machine I have, True. I just, like, pull it up, like, t- push the cat off of it and then look <laughs> at it. And go, <laughs> like, okay, oh, here it is. Right. <laughs> but with a long arm, you do because it's already rolled up, and I don't want to unroll. Mm-hmm. Because then I'm changing the the stretching and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I will say for mine, after the second time when I forgot to pebble in the center square, I went with a water-soluble marker and, like, made a big X in each of them. Of, like, oh, when you get near this X, you should be pebbling. Right. Reminded myself. Like, Give you, and that was it. my next one. Mark the quilt. Yeah. Mark it with, and not a lot. You don't have to mark every line, but mark it with, oh, yeah, I'm going to be doing, I'll just do a little bit of sketch in that area. Knowing that when I hit there, that will continue until yeah. I get to the next sketch of that area. You know, so mark the quilt and practice. Practice. Mm. Get get a muslin and divide it off. This is the four-inch size. This is the three-inch size. This is the two-inch size of the same design. This is the... So how big should that practice piece be? Like a fat quarter sandwich or a half-yard sandwich or a... I would do a half yard and just across, and then you would, you know, it, the more you practice, honestly, 
the more you practice, the yeah, more but, consistent you're going to be. Yeah, but I just want to be good at it without practicing, Lynn. Yeah, but, well. <laughs> I do. Why hadn't that happened yet? Because uh, you have to practice. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. That, uh, how you Dang. get good, and I've said this before, but sincerely, how you get good at tracing lines is you practice tracing lines. That's how I trace lines. I practice tracing lines. And by the time I'm done with this quilt that I've spent 300 hours on, I'm really good at tracing lines <laughs> because slow down. Oh, and another tip. Not a fan of that either. <laughs> yeah, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Another tip is if you are doing really small micro work, up your stitch count per inch. So I do almost 13 per inch. Which means making shorter stitches. Lot shorter stitches per inch because I get a smoother line around circles, or around curves, because it's taking a ton of stitches. So I can get smaller and smaller and it doesn't look jerky. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're doing micro small work, up your stitch count per inch. So I don't do that. <laughs> Because I don't do that kind of quilting usually. Well, and that's, a, you know, that's... There, there you go. There, there you go. That's why we're different. <laughs> but it's, a, I mean, that's what I do. So I up the stitch count, practice, 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 you know. It's the same old, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. It's that joke. Oh, I was going to just plug it into Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's I'll be going to take 85 North. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old joke. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. So how do you get in a quilt show? Practice. Google Maps. No, that's how you get to, not June in. 6th, Cobb <laughs> County Civic Center. I don't own it, by the way. I know Cobb is my last name. It's just a weird quirk, y'all. <laughs> I also didn't invent the salad. <laughs> but we may have discovered it. <laughs> but it's good. I love a good Cobb salad. It's one of my favorite salads. I like a Cobb salad because it's whatever salad I'm eating. This is the Cobb salad now. <laughs> it's great having a weird name. So glad I married into this. <laughs> Think of all the jokes you could have missed without it. Oh, all those good salad jokes. You all the it. salad days of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so draw pictures, practice. How do you stay consistent? That's how I stay consistent. Take I don't pictures. know entirely that I do, frankly. <laughs> I've given some of my experience. I'm like, woo, woo. I Do you start small and then by the time you get to the end it gets no, bigger? I tend you're to think, just like, oh, let's get it done. No, I tend to do work in the opposite where I'm like, I'm do this big kind of loose design. It's going to go quick. And then I find that I tend to shrink it down by scale. Yeah. Now, if I'm lucky, I catch it. So I've started at an appropriate area of the quilt. Like it... it I tend to quilt in quadrants. So I'll start in like the middle of one side and do this quadrant and then go to this and then come around. And so I end up back where I am. And that's regardless of an all over pattern or something like this where it's semi custom. <laughs> and I'll start off that first quadrant thinking like, ooh, yeah, I'm gonna do it like big, loose, get it done quick. And then it like slowly shrinks up when I get up to here. And then I'm like, well, <laughs> all right, what's the, and it's not noticeably. But you've like, noticed but it. Like, quarter to dime or something and I'm like ooh, mm, mm. what happened there uh, and so then I'll like kind of keep it that same slightly smaller one here and then make it looser down here so it looks like it's a design choice that I have just like faded the scale <laughs> you know I uh, I will say that I mark the scale yeah I don't and that know. helps me or I the scales doing... determined for me by the the piecing. Yeah. So like when, when if the, the you know the piece is two inches and I'm doing ribbon candy, I'm hitting the top and the bottom of that. Well, yeah, that's kind of yeah. easy. When I think of an all over meander, usually that's I'm determining hard. the scale based on the piecing size. So if it is a super scrappy quilt and the finished pieces are two inches, right. and I know I want the scale of my meander to be such that I am crossing over every seam, because that's important to me, because particularly for those types of quilts, they're going to be washed a lot in my experience, because right. they're bed quilts or couch right. quilts. And so I want there to be quilting over every seam. And so when it is something like that, it is easier to keep that visual reference from the piecing size, and that's why I don't mark. Right. 
Oh, and I think that's fair. But if you're if you're doing a lot, you know, I'm working on a whole cloth quilt right now, so there is no piecing reference. So I'm marking a lot more to keep that, you know, scale the way I want it to be. And I hope it's consistent, but you practice. I mean, that's it, practice. Mm -hmm. um, and I take pictures. Yeah. I draw a lot on paper. I do draw a lot on paper. That helps my scale. Now, I'm drawing small on paper, so guess what? It's small on the quilt, so it's crazy. It's crazy. I know it is. This is I'm in the, this is the worst idea I've ever had for a quilt stage. <laughs> it's horrible. Oh. I'll be here for a while. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so were you consistently inconsistent or insistent on consistency in quilting? So you can leave a comment on our blog or here on the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches? That's all we have for this episode. Today's show was brought to you by Inmart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd also like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Thank Productions for helping produce this stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell to turn on notifications on YouTube. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, May 10th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. And our next book club episode is April 19th. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan merchandise, gear, patterns, video classes. All the things. All the things. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.